Okay, so uh, I'm going to be doing a tutorial uh, on how to make rope for your 3D environment slash models. Um, now I've got two examples here of what you can get out of this tutorial. It shouldn't take too long, but uh, you should notice there's a bit of a difference uh, in the way that the two meshes here are built. Um, the only thing that I'm going to tell you to take note of is the polygon count. At the minute it's at 9000 for the whole scene, but if I click uh, my more detailed version of the rope you can see it's 8800 whereas this one that isn't looking as good is uh, only 92 polygons so obviously massive difference uh, and you do I do need you to bear in mind that when you're rendering you're possibly going to be this far away or even further if I just render that you can not actually see a massive difference between the two so just keep that in mind. Experiment with it, uh, and hopefully we'll, you know, you'll you'll find the one that works for you. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to hide these two, and I'll get started. So first thing I'm going to show you is the more detailed one, which is fairly simple. Uh, you go over here to the shapes tool. You select helix, uh, draw out a helix shape. Now mine's obviously set already because I've. Oh, just messed around with it. Um, but I'll put the radius to 0.3 on both ends because if you don't do it both ends, it'll um, it'll misshape. It'll look more like a cone. Uh, the other thing to take note of is the amount of turns you're putting in. When you start off, you pr I think you've got like one or something, and it looks like this. You need to add more turns in to add um, more twists. So uh, I think I did 13. Yeah, it looks about right. Okay, so uh, first things first, to get the actual rope onto the to follow the path, because obviously if I um, sorry, if I just hit render, it's a flat image. You can't see anything. It's got no geometry. So you need to use uh, the sweep tool just here. And uh, once you've done that, you select. You should by standard get this. Uh, and in the built-in selection, there's actually different shapes that you can choose from. Uh, just hit cylinder, uh, change the radius, make it smaller, bigger, uh, up to you. If you change the inter interpolar tapellation, uh, I, I can't say that word, um, and increase the steps, it gets a lot smoother. But obviously, if you're looking at the power, uh, the polygon count up in the top left, you'll see how much of a difference it makes. So, you know, I mean, going down to zero might be an option, but it might not be. So you might want to go one above. It's completely up to you. Um, anyway, so that's that's pretty much how you make uh, the actual geometry for the rope. I'm just going to place it over my model like that. Uh, might need to add a few more turns in there just to... Sort of shrink it down, there we go. Um, okay, now, if I'm going to texture this, uh, one thing that I would say is that you need, well, obviously you need a rope texture. Um, I've already downloaded one here. It's just a standard one from Google. It's just a full rope texture. If I apply that, you can see that it doesn't really work that well. Uh, if I hit render, it'll come out in a really weird sort of colour. Um, so what you want to do, because it's obviously not going to be easy to map, uh, Unwrap, sorry. Um, you want to apply just a UVW map, and uh, if you just apply, I find I've found that the uh, the box tool works quite well. Maybe zoom in a bit so you can actually see it. Um, it it's not actually that bad overall. Uh, there is a little bit of an issue with certain edges of it, but from really really far away, like I said, you're going to be looking at it from here. It's not actually that bad. But if you did want to change it. On the UVW map selected, just go to where it says U and V and just increase or decrease the amounts until you've got something that you're after. Um, obviously, scale 1 to 1 is usually the best. Um, I don't see any reason for you to change that, but uh, it, it's completely up to you. Now, what you should look at again, yeah, I've actually gone higher than my original poly count, so this one's on 11,000. So it's quite high considering what it is. Uh, now, the next one should be fairly obvious. Uh, it's just a plain cylinder. Alarm going off. Uh, just a plain cylinder. Again, 
apply the material to the object and what you should see is uh, it creates the rope texture going round now. The only thing about this is I need it to just have a few more oh, uh, if I create the box again, sorry, just to show you. If I want more of these um, sections going up it, obviously this looks like there's a lot of rope going around, this looks like there's not as much. Again, all I have to do, oh, wrong one, is increase the V-tile and it'll do it for me. Now, obviously the polygon count is a hell of a lot lower. Okay, it's a lot more efficient. Um, I just literally need to put it over place and from far away you can't notice much of a difference. Um, the, other, the only other thing I can tell you is that if you really, really, really want those bumps in your model, if you apply an edit poly, um, there is actually an option. Where is it? I'm just, uh, there. There's an option for preserve UVs. If you tick that, okay, it won't change the mapping coordinates, and you can actually select the edge tool just up here. Select all your edges that are going round the object. And then if you hit connect, the little box next to connect and just maybe build a few. Uh, yeah, that looks about right. It doesn't have to be accurate, don't get me wrong, this is this is not going to be accurate. Um, and just go selecting like every two. So skip one out, select one, skip one out, select one. Uh, there we go. Yeah, of course, I've not done enough. Anyway, um, so yeah. Pretend you've done it perfectly, or I've done it perfectly, sorry. Uh, hit the loop tool so it goes round. Grab the scale tool and just push it out a bit. And it should, if I'm right, yeah, it doesn't... It actually looks like it's it's bumped out rope. You can't tell from very far away unless you zoom right in. And again, 644 polygons versus 11,000. So... It's completely up to you which you do. I hope that's been helpful. Um, yeah, okay. Thanks for listening.